Hello, my absolutely beautiful astrology soulmates, and welcome to this video where we are going to talk about this new moon in Taurus coming up May 7th, going to be a brilliant new moon, not to mention it's the happy birthday moon for all of our Taurus friends. Now for everybody, yes, it's like the happy birthday season to the Taurus area of your chart, but Taurus suns, happy, happy birthday. This is your new moon. Plant your seeds of intention. What are you going to begin to shape yourself into? What do you want? What are you calling in? What seeds of intention are you planting to nurture for this next year, for your next year of life and experience? So lots of good stuff coming on in this particular moon. And I have to tell you, I am so thrilled to talk about this gorgeous connection, not only with Uranus, not only with Saturn, but with Ceres, because this tells us that at this particular moon, not only are we planting our seeds of intention to build something that can have steady, sustainable, enduring material um, quality to it for us for the next years to come, certainly for the next months. But with Ceres here, we're doing it in a way where there is love, there is grace, there is patience, there is nurturing available to us and us to others. And I can't wait to share what the astrology has to say about that. Now, if we haven't met before, I'm Stormy Grace. I'm a practicing professional astrologer. I practice evolutionary and humanistic astrology. So if you like content that comes through that lens, then this is definitely going to be your kind of video. And I would love for you to hit the like and subscribe button and definitely join our community here, the Soulmate Family Tribe. We've been rocking and rolling together for quite some time. It's a good community. If you want to learn astrology, if you're new, if you're advanced in astrology, come. This is a supportive group of people right here on YouTube. And we're just talking about life and astrology. It's a good place to be. Now, if you are looking to mix it up just a little bit, you want a little spice, okay? (laughs) <laughs> come and join me for the personality code. It is a summit. It's free. It's financially free with my friend, Andrew Colombini. And he's pulling in people from different professions, astrology, psychology, human design, Enneagram. He's got all of it going together and he's doing a financially free summit. I would love for you to join myself, Kira Sutherland, uh, Sam Reynolds, Nura Michelle. We're, we're all in there. So come and check it out. It's a good time. Links in the description box down below. And of course, you can still get get your astrology 101 and 102 bundles. They are um, on sale together in the description box down below. Okay, friends, the new moon, we're planting our seeds of intention to begin something new. And remember, we're planting in the dark at the new moon. There's no light. Here's what there's not light. (laughs) Okay, but here's what there is at the new moon is first of all, remember, the new moon is coming out of this really delicious balsamic phase where everything over the last 28 days you have learned and over the last cycles of your life that you have learned and you have brought to the surface have been culminating. So they have come, they have been broken down, they are now really, really deliciously built into your soil. So as we move into the new moon time, this is the thing that myself and Stephen Forrest talked about in one of the videos we did together is that at the new moon, the soil of your life is so incredibly fertile so that what you're going to plant here for good or for ill, it's going to take some shape. It's going to take some root and this thing is going to grow. So one of the things I want to tell you, first of all, is yes, celebrate this dark moon time, but also be choosy, be choosy. Be choosy, my friends, because the people, places, things, ideas that you plant into your garden right now. You're going to have to work these out. And this particular moon, you know, I'm always going on about the lunar families. This is the start. You're at the beginning of a new cycle that's not going to culminate until August of 2026, okay? And you'll be able to see the lunar family on the screen. So let's be deliciously engaged with the changes that you would like to nurture and you would like to bring to flourishing, okay? Now, something else I just want to point out because I do think that it's pretty important important when we're looking at all of the energies that are available at this moon is one, we have been to two degrees of Pluto in Aquarius. Okay. And we're going to be, we're moving at this point inside of the Pluto retrograde. Please check out your Pluto retrograde video as well. I'll make it sure it's at the end of this video, but Pluto at two degrees of Aquarius took us a little further into a new world than we've ever seen before. So we got to like kind of peek through the veil just a little bit. And what's over there We're not fully prepared yet, so we're getting ready here. 
And at this new moon, one of the things that really occurs to me is not only are there going to be old ideas that we're going to find out they've been controlling us from that Pluto retrograde and we can't work with them anymore, but at this new moon in an earth energy, you're going to also find out that as you plant your seeds of intention, some of these people Some of the old places and the old playmates are not going to fit. They're not going to work anymore because they can't rock with you to achieve the material dream. So I know at the new moon, this is a time to talk about that. Ask the universe, call in, manifest, speak with the ancestors for guidance. Who is really in your tribe? Who is really in your best interest to show you how to build in this material plane, to show you how to nurture self-worth, right? Like, and yes, it is self-worth, but when we're surrounded by people who are just tearing it down, it's really hard to even get a foothold on it. Or when we're not around people, you know, being around people who demonstrate Torah and qualities, beauty, being around people who have a beauty routine and don't make it shameful, show you what does it mean to have a slower morning, have a slower pace of life and really be with yourself and your thoughts and listen to your body and your gut biome and your hormones. And how does your hair feel today? And what does that tell you about what you're eating? Right? So these are not always shallow principles. They absolutely can be. But if you're not around these people, you don't have them in your tribe. You're not around people who have learned different things with money who've learned the legacy qualities of money and financial freedom, right? If you're not around these people, if you say, I want to have partnership in my life and you are only hanging out with single people or you're hanging out with only people who've been in broken relationships, that may not be the right tribe to help you build this beautiful thing that you are planting your seeds of intention to bring into the light, okay? So I want to put that out front here. And I think that's important because the rest of the aspects will help us see how to do that as well. Now, first of all, we've got the sun and the moon and together. Together, that's what makes this astrological aspect. And when the luminaries are traveling together, anything's possible. You can see here on the chart, they're traveling together at 18 degrees. Absolutely lovely energy. Anything's possible. We're planting seeds of intention in the material plane because earth signs work in the material plane. Now, we just had the Jupiter Uranus conjunction just a little bit away from this, and the moon tends to have wide, wiggly fingers. So I give it about a 10 degree orb when we're talking about the moon. So the moon is absolutely scooping up that 20, 21 degree placement that Uranus and Jupiter just created their stamp and their signature. As well, Uranus is going to be more tightly connected conjunct to this moon as well. So make room for life to surprise and delight you because Uranus, oh, I have said that in three different videos now. That must really be what I think of Uranus and Jupiter together. I'll make a video on that someday. Okay. But as (laughs) as Jupiter and Uranus came together for that conjunction, they seeded. It was a beginning. They seeded this thing that is going to be able to be fortunately built for you for the next 14, 15 years. They seeded it, right? They got it ready. Now you're coming with some of this new moon magic to say, I am willing to commit my energy, my attention, my resources to actually putting the hard work in because Taurus is going to do some hard work to growing this thing. But now here's where the other aspects I think get really cool. First of all, we've got this moon also in a really lovely sextile to Saturn in Pisces. So this is a, a an opportunity here where it's not just an opportunity, but you're intelligently taking action on the opportunity. And with Saturn in Pisces, it's one to have some faith that what you want wants you to, that what you are calling in is looking for you as well. But the other part of Saturn in Pisces that I think goes so well with the Taurus energy is that if you are willing to commit and you're willing to do the hard work, you have to stop talking about it and you have to be about it. It can't be the quote on the back of the wall anymore. It can't just be the quote in the mirror. It has to be you aligning yourself with the people, places, things, and taking advantage of moving towards them, bringing them into your life, being about getting your vibration right. Because remember, Pisces works between the worlds. It's so much more about the vibe, right? And if you can bring that in between this beautiful combination of earth and of water, then you build something in there. You make a beautiful paste, a beautiful mud that you can build a structure that can stand for a very, very long time. Now, the other side of it is that Saturn is in Pisces. It is telling you 
that delusion's not going to work anymore. But the creativity and trusting your intuition will absolutely be useful, okay? Now, the aspect that really has my attention the most, I know I'm supposed to be really excited just about Uranus and about Saturn touching this moon, but for me, it's this beautiful trine we see this being made to Ceres. And why I think this is so incredibly important at this moon is that what you're building, what you're going to, the way that you are planting your seeds of intention for where you want to go next, you're doing it in a way where Ceres, you're learning about your relationship with nurturing yourself. You're learning about a relationship between what does it mean to give birth or to be birthed as an adult, as a conscious person, right? How do you do this? How do you do this with kindness? How do you work in the world today in a tangible way where Ceres connecting with this new moon lets you really be of service to yourself and others by nurturing them in some way? And that really gives fulfillment to this emotional energy that you have. Where is it that you have things going on with you or in your past story or that are now available resources for others, right? You had a liability in your past, per se, and now it's an asset. And what you become is this natural nurse, this natural counselor, this natural teacher, this natural minister or something like that to someone else where you're sharing a message with them about hope, about being able to hear what they're saying, right? This is so much of a nurturing and a service aspect as much as it is about just you receiving the nurturing. It's almost like I feel like with um, series, as more, the more that we selflessly give from the stories that have already been real in our lives, we have great joy. We have great fulfillment in watching the lights come on for other people. I think it also speaks to a really deep need in in each of us that we have a natural desire. We have a natural desire. We have a natural skill to care for others. And we do it best when we also learn to let others care for us. And we let this be intensely, beautifully cyclical. It's ease. We're working with Taurus energy, right? And here in this trine, we're working with Taurus and Capricorn energy, so with Ceres in Capricorn, right, it could have been this story for a very long time of you are loved, you are worthy of love and nurturing for what you do. When you do things, when you achieve things, then you're valuable. Oh, that story is rough. And that story being in trying and coming up with this um, Taurus, you naturally may know that. And that may be what absolutely makes you a vast connection with another person is that we're all learning that we're valuable. We have innate value by being, especially feminine energy has innate value by being. It's a receptive energy. It needs to call in the energy of giving, right? So being able to relate in a story where, where have you felt like that? Where have you felt like in your world, in your society, in your past, in your life right now, that your value comes from what it is you can do, what you can give, how much you're consuming, um, you know, and you're ready to create a different conversation and a different atmosphere. And that is the way that we can easily be of service under this energy. So for some people really, truly, you know, compassion may flood into your life and you see situations um, from the past with a bunch of different eyes or from a different perspective. For other people, you may be actually starting businesses. You may be starting conversations. Um, you know, Ceres is connected to Jupiter Uranus here right at that signature point. So I wouldn't be surprised at all looking at this if it's not extended work with family. Some of you may be stepping out with some things with children, I think, but pets, gardening, food, nourishment, I think a lot of nourishment when I look at this. Um, really, there could be a connection to children and feeling like you have um, a space to nourish them or nourish your own inner child with these particular aspects. But that connection to your honest would say that you're doing it in a really different or a really unique way, which could just be it's innovative. It's not what the world told you it was supposed to be. It's not the world told you how you were supposed to be allowed to be. And now you're doing it in a different way. So planting your seeds of intention at this particular moon, I think is absolutely Absolutely precious because what you get to nurture in 
to your own world and what you get to nurture in by nurturing yourself into others becomes naturally of service. You make really important and significant changes when we're working with earth energies. When you make changes to them, you can change your vibe all the way down for generations to come. And they're very, very realistic. You're not doing anything like outside of the the norm, right? Like it's practical, it's realistic. The changes you want to make may just seem out of the norm because they're not things you thought to do before. That's very Uranus and Taurus as well. It's like shaking you out of your comfort zone. You realize you have skills, talents, um, resources available to you that you weren't using before, but when you use them, they're practical. And that's one of the things that I love to remember is that most spiritual things are practical. And I think we get an opportunity to make our beginning and to see where we're going to continue to build the work that is going to create a resource for many years to come in our lives. But we get to do it in a way that we bring a lot more nurturing. We love ourselves through the transition as it is happening, but we also commit to doing the good hard work that is very Taurus energy. But man, don't we do it with a lot more ease, right? Because the Taurus at an evolutionary um spin Taurus's job is to like calm down like calm down calm down do it but do it easy do it but work smarter not harder do it enjoy the beauty of it be beautiful right not be beautiful like you have to be cute when you're out and about but be beautiful because you feel beautiful be beautiful because you're sharing you know your story your love you're sharing your grace with other people because you know what it's like to feel like you're only valuable for what you can do or provide and now we're going to break that story down and create a space of a really delicious new cycle new beginning and good stories good food good soul food that comes in terms of words good soul food that comes in terms of actual food and resources that we have to share with one another. And it may all be feeling a little bit out of the box, but I promise you practical is spiritual and you have the opportunity to make some really delicious changes at this particular moon. Now look in the description box down below because I will have broken down this particular moon in each of the houses of your astrology. And again, remember, I break them down by houses on purpose because not everybody's using whole sign and not everybody's using Placidus. So check out where this is happening in your particular chart. Where are you nurturing something with good, easy, beautiful, hard work (laughs) into your life? Where are you shedding some old playmates and play places that don't actually fit the story for you to grow your resources anymore? Where is that happening for you? Check it out in the description box and then let me know in the comment section down below where this is happening in your chart. I can tell you for me this is happening right on top of my sun and I cannot wait to share lots of good news and lots of big changes that are coming over here on this side. Actually I'll share one of them with you. I'm really excited to share with you that I got into um, a Korean language school and I tested at a different level than I thought I would and I'm really excited to take that journey of continuing to learn Korean and apply to be the um astrologer for Korean air. So there you go. A little bit of news I'm sharing with you. Several other things I'll share along the way, but let me know what's changing for you in the comment section down below and happy seed planting. But remember, be wise, be choosy. The The soil of your life is so fertile right now. So if you don't think you're going to want to put up with that person, place, thing, or old idea for the next, you know, two months, 15 years, two years, however long it sticks around, be really choosy right now. And that is a great way to nurture and to love yourself as you plant your seeds for your new beginning. All right, beautiful friends, check out your Pluto retrograde video. And then, of course, make sure you're always checking out your weeklies and go back and check out your annual videos as well, because we put a lot of work in that and see where the uh, the horoscopes are tracking for for you from now um, into the beginning of the year when we first were listening to them. Okay. All right, beautiful friends. I love you and I will see you next video. Bye.